Welcome back to Hawkeye Skunk Works. Uh, last week we talked about, uh, we did a real world review of the suspension on the 4Runner. This week we are going to do a real world review of this, the Costway 44 fridge freezer. Stay tuned. We are going to do something that has never been done before. The cheapest third gen Toyota 4Runner in the entire country. Welcome back to Hawkeye Skunk Works, where I have bought another 4Runner. Seriously. It just got deep. Row, row. Dad, um. everything is blowing! Well, we finally got unstuck. That was a little ridiculous. Now, if you haven't seen my video unboxing this and kind of my initial impressions and how I hooked it up uh, and stuff, I highly, highly recommend you go watch that video first. Link in the description that talks about how I kind of had an issue with voltage and I did some rewiring. Um, very simple, simple stuff. Um, so don't be daunted by the rewiring. I also talked about why I got this. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, when we had it in Tennessee, uh, we had it on the trails every single day and uh, we used it for 10 days. So before we left, the, day, uh, the night before, uh, I turned it on, uh, got it going, pre-chilled all of our food, obviously, and loaded it up. Uh, ran it off 110 uh, in the garage all night and then hooked it up to the 12 volt in the morning because at this point it was still kind of it still it was untested overnight so we'll go ahead and flip up the factory 12 volt outlet and the car is off right now 12.4 uh, volts is what my voltmeter is showing and we'll go ahead and plug it in it's gonna go through um, some, it's gonna flash through all the codes like triple one, triple two, all the way up through nine. And then if it was on, when you turn, when you unplug it last, it will turn right back on. I never even used the power button. 87 degrees inside the unit. And um, this started kind of one of my questions about the unit it's not running it's been plugged in for what 30 45 seconds now and it's probably going to take about three minutes before it's going to kick on and we'll we'll come back to that later right now it is set to well it was at 42 i don't that was kind of high um i usually keep it at 31 and i had it at, on 31 degrees pretty much the entire time we were at windrock um just with our normal everyday food. The night we got there, I took everything out of it that uh, I thought if it were to run out of battery in the middle of the night, like if it would turn itself off, would spoil. So I left like bottles of water, Gatorade, juice boxes. I left stuff like that in it. And I set the temperature up to 33 degrees. Now, there are three settings on the back of the unit. There's a high, medium, and low. And that is um, basically your ba battery tending, your battery monitoring. It has just kicked on, so maybe I'll run through the timestamp to, to see how long that took. Um, on the high setting on the back, say if, you're, if it senses your battery is at 12 volts, it'll turn off. The medium setting, if it senses 11 and a half volts, it'll turn off. And on the low setting, if it senses 11 volts, it'll turn off. I have it now set on the medium and have it set on the medium setting the entire time I've had it and it has never turned off. I don't think I've ever gotten below like 12.2 or 12.3 volts um, running it like through the night, which I did several times. So, um, we put all of our lunch stuff in here at 31 degrees and 
the, si the external size of the cooler, as I touched on earlier, is basically the size of your standard cooler. Um, Coleman cooler, Igloo cooler, Arctic, Yeti, they're all about the same size in that 40 to 44 quart or liter um, size. Now, I will say that I'm pretty sure that is the total interior volume, not the total usable interior space, um, which obviously there's insulation and there's a compressor in inside that are taking up room, which when I got it, I was like, oh boy, I'm glad I didn't get anything smaller. Also, that being said, once we started using it and filling it with lunch meat, cheese, peanut butter, jelly, ketchup, mustard, mayo, vegetables, juice boxes. You can fit a lot more in here than you would think. Um, so just throw that out there. And yes, there is a light in the back and the light works very well actually. So um, the temperature fluctuations. Now it's set to 31. It will run until it is about to 27 degrees and turn off and then it will go back up to 34 35 degrees and then kick back on that is you're going to be your temperature fluctuation four or five degrees colder and warmer for kicking on and off um, consistently i have noticed that um, so there are two controls on the front eco and max that's in the settings um, from my research of the little bit of information there is online and talking to a few people that have these pretty much you, you don't want to have it on the eco it has something to do with how it runs the compressor and in the long run it's not good for it so you want to keep it in the max and that's what I've had and it's been doing fantastic so obviously uh, we had a 12 hour trip down there bouncing around in the car three full days you know more or less bouncing around on the trails and then another seven days of travel in the car the whole time i never took it out it's been strapped down like you can see and it's been in there ever since we got back um and it's been fine it says it's designed for you know off camber situations and being uh bumped around and i have to say that it uh has done done that very well one modification that I did make, we'll pop it up here, and we're going to zoom in. In the back here, you're going to see well, a screw, and then there's a corresponding screw on the lid. What that was originally was a little chain, kind of like a keychain, that uh, connects these two so that the lid doesn't hyper go up too far, but it hits my ceiling. And I don't have to worry about that, and that's why I use my bungee cord to keep the lid open when there's not fishing rods on it. So um, we close that. The reason I took that chain off is because it swayed back and forth and clanged on the inside of the, uh, the unit and was super annoying. Another small thing that I did that's not really a modification, on the back of the unit there are vents um, for the cooling unit and I did not want to have that pressed right up against my uh, the inner fender well because I wanted all that heat to be able to escape so it could run efficiently. And so I've just got a piece of wood wedged in there to kind of keep it uh, keep it from scooting any closer. I have this strap down, as you can see. Um, I don't have them super tight because honestly, I don't know how stout this handle is, but so far, so good. And you can see from my mounting system, I just have a piece of unistrut here bolted um, all the way down through the body and I have one in the back bolted down to where the factory cargo hooks are and I also had a kind of a Rubbermaid dry goods pantry tote back here that I had ratchet strapped down as well while we were on the trails and this works really really good um, obviously the, the hatch when it's closed clears this one specific piece of information I don't have for you honestly because I don't think it's really that important I never timed this to see how long it came down temperature wise because that's all going to be dependent on the ambient temperature out outside, the temperature on the inside, um, what temperature you have it set to, and probably like how much amperage you're actually pulling off of your, your battery and um, how many volts you have exactly. I can tell you that um, on several different occasions because once we left Windrock um, and we went to our next cabin, uh, 
we didn't need to have lunches packed, so I turned this off during the day. But when we went out in the evenings, every evening, um, I, actually, I didn't plan on doing this, but I ended up turning it on every evening because we took some drinks and snacks. And we even hauled some ice cream in it. So it was up over 100 degrees ambient temperature inside the unit and probably outside the unit in the car pretty much every time. And I'd set it back down to that 31 degrees and it was fast. Um, it definitely was very quick. It was quicker than I expected for this unit. Um, and that's one thing that I was kind of worried about um, before I got it, the, how fast it would take to come down. But that's one of the things that I was most surprised and happy with afterwards. Now I will admit um, it has not been 100% smooth sailing from the get-go. Um, when I first got it, like I said, the instruction manual is awful. Um, it took a little while of finagling with the settings to figure out exactly how to use it and to figure out that I wasn't getting enough uh, voltage through my factory plug, even though it said I was getting 12 volts, I wasn't getting enough, and then figuring out what setting on the back of the unit that I needed to have it on, um, which kind of leads me into the next point is if you've ever bought anything off Amazon that's Chinese from China, even though this ships from the U.S., it's, it's a Chinese company, um, there's, or Asian, I guess I don't know China for sure. There's essentially no website for it. I had some questions, um, so I emailed the seller through Amazon, and since they are on the other side of the world, wherever exactly they are, um, it was one email a day to and one email a day from, from me to them, and vice versa for a week, um, every 24 hours trying to get some information across because um, I wanted to know how to clear error codes, and I, and I wanted to know what those temperature fluctuations are. And, how long it should take the unit to kick on after you've plugged it in and basically they answered none of those questions. <laughs> um, uh, all those answers just came from me using it. Um, they were very polite and they did respond to every one of my emails. Um, at one point I was like, you know what, I like the unit, I want to keep the unit, but I want you to send me a different one. I want to send this one back to make sure that there's not any bugs in it, flaws. And of course they didn't really want to do that. Um, and uh, what ended up transpiring was I figured it out um, and they offered me a 50% refund off my purchase price. So that was nice. I ended up paying I think like $180 all said and done uh, for the unit and it's been fantastic. So if you are a weekend warrior at best, like myself, I would say this is a very good option. If you are planning on doing extended trips, um, living out of your vehicle, living out of your camper, full-time overlanding, as far as customer service and warranty stuff and just information on units, I don't think I would recommend it. I think I'd go with one of the more reputable brands, although I think they're Almost all of them are out of Australia, so you may have 24 hours to get a hold of those people too. I don't know, but um, I think I'd probably, obviously, if you if your nutrition day to day completely depended on that for keeping your food cool, I'd probably go with the Dometic Snowmaster ARB. Um, yeah, that that's my that is my takeaway thought on on this unit. So that all being said, I'm sure that I missed some information. Uh, we, I didn't plan on leaving it in here. We literally use it so much um, and so intermittently. Uh, I've just left it in here because it's going to take up space if I put it somewhere else. We use it every week when we go pick up groceries because nine times out of ten when we go pick up the groceries, we have to go do a million other things too. So I plug it in when we leave the house, it takes us 15 minutes to get to the grocery store by then, it's definitely in for low 40s or 30 degrees. Throw the cool stuff in there and uh, we are good to go. I will add this, if you're on the fence, Mrs. HSW, who is very smart, very savvy when it comes to just stuff like this in general, um, useful stuff, financially sound decisions told me that about three-fourths of the way through our trip, she said, I have to admit, I wasn't sure 
about having a refrigerator, if it was going to be worth the price. She said, but I 100% am sold on it and completely glad that we have it. And it has been the unsung hero of the entire trip. That's, that's what she said. So, I mean, fellas, if you need some approval from your missus, my missus gives your missus permission to give you permission. So, anyway, uh, head on over to Instagram, head on over to Facebook, follow me over there, uh, daily posts over there. Be sure to watch the first video of this if you watched all of this all the way through and didn't watch that. Uh, watch our ATR video and, and all of that um, awesome stuff. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. Give the video a thumbs up if thumbs up, thumbs up. <laughs> um, if you found the information helpful and if you have any comments that are helpful to my continual use of this or to anyone else's use of this, please feel free to put them down below. And if you have any really detailed questions, you can always email me at hawkeyeskunkworks at gmail.com. So until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care. Goodbye.